Welcome back to the Comfy Coder. My name is Max and today I'm gonna guide you through installing Rust. The first thing we need to do is we need to go to the official documentation on how to install Rust, which is found at rust-lang.org or you can just Google Rust programming language and it should be the first link. Once we are here, you will go directly to the installation section and you could of course read through this, but this is what this video is for, I'm going to guide you through it. So the first thing we are going to do is install RustUp. RustUp is a command line tool for managing Rust versions. This means it's not only going to help us install Rust, but in the future we can also use it to update Rust. So I'm on Linux, this is why I'm going to follow these commands here. But if you are on Windows, don't worry, you can also install Rust. Although it might be a bit more cumbersome because you need to install Visual Studio 2022 because Rust depends in part on C and C++ and you just need those development tools for C++. Typically, installing Rust on your computer is a really simple procedure. Just copy this command if you're on Linux or macOS to install Rust up. Now just go into your terminal, paste this command, make sure that you're getting rid of this extra dollar sign here at the beginning and run it. You can see now the installer is downloaded and you can customize this the way you want. So by default you see this is going to install the stable toolchain, which is what I would recommend if you start with Rust, because you don't need the latest and greatest features, which would be the nightly build at the cost of maybe running into some bugs. And of course, what is also important, allow the installer to modify your path variable, which means that Rust will be directly available in your path. So in this case, I'm gonna just proceed with the installation as the default suggests. And let that run until it finished. So at this point you can already see that Rust does not simply consist of only a compiler, but instead we are getting packages like Cargo, Clippy, we are getting the docs, and we are getting the compiler itself, Rust C, but also we have a tool called Rust FMT, which is the formatter. So after some time you should see exactly this message, Rust is installed now, great, which means you are absolutely ready to go. Now let's scroll down here a bit and give it one final check whether the installation is really there. We can execute rust c dash dash version. And it should show the current version of Rust that is installed. For me, this is version 1.70.0, which is built on end of May 2023. So now we want to try out Rust and get our typical Hello World program running, which you have as a first program in every programming language, right? So for this, you're going to go into a folder of your choosing. And in here, you can now instantiate a new project with Cargo New. So Cargo, as I said in the introductory video, is your all-in-one Swiss army knife for Rust development. So in this case, it's going to help us to generate a new project. We're just going to call Cargo New and now any name you want. I'm going to just call it Tutorial. And you see, this is very quick. It generates a tutorial package. We can just CD into that. So in here, we see that we have a cargo.toml file, which is for our dependencies. Then we have a Git repository automatically instantiated, and we have a source folder. So in order to give this a closer look, I will just open all of this in Visual Studio Code. And let's just put this on a separate vi window. And now we can look at this newly generated project. As I said, we have this cargo.toml file. This gives us some information about what the name of this project is, what version we have, and the edition. Additionally, you could add some dependencies here, which currently we have none of. The most important and most interesting thing, of course, is your 
main.rs file in the source folder. So all Rust source files are ending with .rs, which stands for Rust. And in here you can find the minimum viable program that you will be able to write in Rust. It is a function denoted by the fn keyword with the name main. Main, of course, being the main entry point of your program, which is the same in so many other languages. Then in curly braces, which denote your function scope, you have only one single statement that is executed in this program, which is print line of hello world, the classic. So print line has this peculiar bang in here, and this might be the only thing that is a bit difficult in this simple function. So what it does is it denotes that print line or print ln is a macro. A macro being a shortcut for some kind of predefined code that we can use in order to have a bit of a shorter syntax. However, don't worry about this. Just remember that print ln with the bang will just print to your standard output. So now, of course, let's run this thing. Before we can run it, we need to build. And as you already expected, building is done with cargo. So I'm going to use just this integrated terminal here in VS Code and run cargo build. And you can see it built quite quickly. And we now have this target folder that has in it the debug build, lots of dependencies, lots of stuff that we don't need to go into detail right now. Just now that now you have a build program. So of course, let's run it. Easy as that, we're gonna go cargo run. And of course, no surprise, we see the output hello world here. Of course, we can now change this program. For example, we can change world to Rust, save it. And this time we can take a shortcut. Instead of running cargo build again, we will just go cargo run. And cargo run will automatically run the build process if it sees that the files have changed. And now we of course have hello Rust as an output. Now, of course, you can do Rust development in any code editor you want. You can see that all you need to compile and run your program are some terminal commands, which are totally independent of your IDE. However, if you are in VS Code, as I am, I can definitely recommend installing the Rust Analyzer extension. Not only does it give you semantic syntax highlighting, which you would expect in a modern IDE, and of course code completion, but you will also see later that we get inlay hints for types of variables, which oftentimes can be a very good thing to have. So now you saw how easy it is to set up a new project with Rust, and we're going to go into the details of how you can manage your dependencies with this cargo.toml file, and of course, all of the Rust syntax in future videos. Until then, stay comfy.